Well, happy, bright, sunshiny day to all of you fine people who've tuned in today. I'm Max Stevens, and I buy old records, and I'm going out um, an hour or so from town. See a guy here, who I believe y'all have met before, who's got some records for me. Then I'm going to go out and see another friend of mine, whom I don't think you've met before. He's got a record store, and it's a neat record store. It's out in the rural wilds you know normally you don't drive around a little two-lane road and see a store that says record store that's that's a welcome thing normally that's a big city hipster phenomenon i've had a really run of good luck in the last day or so selling so i think i'm coming out of my dry spell oh also too i'll try to keep my language from being salty because i just watched dolomite the other day i didn't know eddie murphy could make a good movie anymore and he did it he knocked this one out of the ballpark I mention it because there's so many references to uh, the record labels and the industry that he was dealing with and they didn't change any of the names to protect the innocent they named the Bahari brothers who owned the uh, modern RPM Kent and a uh, satellite company called Meteor out in Memphis that empire and they mentioned Laugh Records, which put out great things by Red Fox. You know, they, these were all African-American uh, salty humor, blue stuff. Oh man, Rudy Ray Moore, Dolomite. You've got to check it out. It's one of the finest movies I have ever seen in my life. If you like records, you're gonna like this movie. If you like R&B and just cool stuff, oh, you're gonna love it. Go with me now. I think that's enough of a preamble for this trip. Thank y'all for coming, and please hit subscribe. I need subscribers. If you're watching these and you like them, hit subscribe. It's not going to hurt you. I'm not going to spam you. I probably won't even find out your address and where you live and your social or anything like that. Probably not. Let's go. All right, I'm checking my oil. We just checked it as I've... Uh, been gassing up the car but I'll tell you what we get a shot of getting a Honda Element if you don't mind them being older they're good 227,000 miles and right now it's at 5,000 miles on this oil change and it hasn't touched the drop that's not unusual uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, go see my buddy go see my other buddy buy some records and all but I was just thinking um, I can't get to the comment section as much as I like to because I'm a forgetful sot and I know there's some good questions in there that I will be answering hopefully this evening when I get back but if you do have some really good questions ask me you can private message me or ask me in comments and I'll start answering them there but here on video as well you know questions like how come everywhere I go, people pull out a 78 of Bean Crosby, Blue Christmas or White Christmas, whatever color Christmas he was singing about, thinking it's worth a million dollars? There's millions of those around. Of course, my answer then, it would be people are greedy suckers and they think just because something's famous, it must be worth a lot of money. No. Insert your own Kardashian comment there. Well, they're worth money though, aren't they? So uh, I'm gonna start doing that. Try to get y'all a little more involved in the process. Keeps me from going crazy from traveling solo so much. We'll see ya. Well, I've gotten here and I'm gonna take a look at these records. And Mistreated Blues by Lucky Lee. That title alone sells it. I'm gonna get stuck in here and I'll let you know what I find. Look at that, I love that. America's most colorful hillbilly Indian. I oh, I like that. I, I... Well, that was enjoyable. I uh, got to looking at records, talking. Of course, forgot to uh, film myself going through it, the stuff, and following through it and all. But there wasn't many records, maybe 30 or 40 records there total. But this is a, a case of uh, quality overcoming quantity. So we're going to pull off the road in just a little bit, and I'll show you what's, what's up paid them very well for the stuff that's why I get the call um, I pay better than anybody out there in the wilds for stuff like this most people will come along they'll see Bill Mack at Saturday night on star day and try to tell them oh it's a country record I'll give you three dollars or you know if they're if you're they're lucky I a ten dollar record 
it's a good rockabilly bopper with the fantastic guitar solo in there and just a whole lot of good hepcat type lyrics honky tonk rocker you know that's something i'll get 50 or 64 out in the wilds i know i'll sell it and i'll make my part and then i get the return call from the folks who dig up records because i will pay i like the way that works i'm going to put this away because i'm in a construction zone and i don't want to get killed or anything like that uh -uh. i've left the main highway now i'm gonna go off this little uh, two lane into this small town that for years has tried to be touristic and touristy and such as that and that's good for them i hope they finally find the groove that brings people in but it's got a record store so i like that we go see eddie he's a good guy a lot of fun he'll holler at me when he gets uh, 45s and such and like always i pay well for what i buy so i keep getting the return calls and we're gonna pull off here first though i'm going to show you what i bought uh just back here at the other place and I think I'll pull right over here. Let's do a little kibitzing here. See what Uncle Mac has found today. This is always nice. Hoot and Curly on Star Day. It's got some label tears, but it needs to be clean. But Country Lovin' is a really good hillbilly bopper. Hoot and Curly uh, played in a club. Oh, it might have been South Texas or maybe Louisiana. And... Elvis played there in 54 when he first started and it went over very so badly that they were told they that to Elvis had ruined the club and never to show his face there again. Dickie Lee, this is a Stay True Baby. Pretty common, I just hate passing up copies. Really good Memphis area rockabilly. This is a marvelous thing. rock -a bop and Skull and Crossbones by Sparkle Moore. She passed away recently. She was a gorgeous lady and a marvelous singer Sue Sue Boogie by Bill Mack one of his great uh, boogies that's really tough to find on 45 and this is everybody's favorite and mine I put a spell on you by Screaming Jay Hawkins decent shape hard to find those without a crack in it this is one of my favorites out of the group Bill Mack it's Saturday night Hey, give me a good-looking girl and an automobile. Oh, my. Bill had a big old voice. Not a big guy, either. He's a little guy with a big voice. My dad met him once. I met him once, too. He didn't like tall people. This is a nice bopper. Mistreated, or in this case, mistreaded, blues by Lucky Lee, America's most colorful hillbilly Indian. I won't comment on that. This is a marvelous thing. Everybody loves this record, and they usually turn up cracked, but it's Bandstand Rocket by the Twisters out of Dallas. Let's take a good look and make sure it ain't cracked. No, it ain't cracked. It's got a lot of play to it, but it played really clean. I'll be able to do something fun with that. Blockbusters, full-time baby, a nice echoey, fairly common rocker. This is just a strange thing. I think it's Dutch or something. Oh, Angelina by Mark Dex and the Rubies. That's got some good guitar in there. It's a, what we call a foreign pressing. Neat Instrumental by the Willows out of uh, Nashville. I don't think it's anything real special, but that label is so pretty, I just had to get it. Dick Knoll doing a pop rocker, Hot Dog That Made Her Mad, Wanda Jackson song. Really good bopper. Driving Away My Blues by George Rich on Tally. I don't know what it's worth, but it's nice. Eddie Dean, Walking After Midnight, male version of the Patsy Cline. And uh, Big Maybell doing Tell Me Who. It turns up a lot, but Warren Smith did an unissued version of that at Sun. And then uh, Billy Lee Riley, his first record, Rock With Me Baby. Don't you know your daddy wants to rock? So I'm going to cover that up from the sun, which has made a wonderful welcome appearance today. And, uh, and when I say I cover up a record, I cover it up more than a politician getting rid of reel-to-reel uh, -reel tapes with incriminating evidence. That dates you, dates me to how old I am, I suppose. Well, let's go over here to Eddie's place. Hope you enjoy. We has arrived. He's got the open sign up. I prefer open signs. 
rather than brandished shotguns. So this is a uh, neat little town and uh, they've got antique places, vintage wine places, boutiques, and it's all in a town of maybe a thousand people. So let's go in. Well, this here's Eddie. Eddie has the only record store in all of the town of Ben Wheeler, and it's a nice place. I get excited seeing the records up there, and then I'll check. Just like me, he'll take the good cracked ones and put them on the wall. They're a good attractant for buzzards like me. So he's going to show me what he's got. And uh, if you're ever coming through Ben Wheeler, stop by uh, B's Records. B E apostrophe S. That's it, just like on that hat there he's wearing. Thursday through Sunday. Thursday through Sunday, and you'll catch them at the uh, record shows all around Texas. Yeah, I can find me on Facebook. Like, like them. You gotta like the guy. <laughs> Billy Wallace, that's my reward. One of my favorite old bass slapping acoustic things. Well, cool. It's always good to visit with Eddie there. Half the people I know are named Eddie, it seems. But I bought that uh, Billy Wallace record and uh, a few uh, bluegrass 45s and they're not heavy hitters or anything like that but it's stuff to throw in my sale box for the shows good trading material and occasionally you might even want to play the records and just enjoy the music well that may be it i'm going to drive home look for things along the way but being a sunday eh, you know what i've said about sundays we'll see what's out there but if not Catch you next go round. Well, this is neat. A place that says vintage and it's called the Groove. Let's see if it's records. All right. Well, as I always say, no 45s or 78s. Good selection of LPs. But that's a place to keep in mind for further checking. And you just want to get on good terms to people who run the shops and uh, not be cheap about anything and not be an arrogant know-it-all either a lot of people that go out buy her that way that's a turn off be nice i think that's the last stop for the day so i buy old records subscribe and i'll catch you again bye